Friends, the biggest Dying Light 2 update has finally arrived and it looks like it's going to be some massive changes incoming for this game with patch 1.2. Now, of course, this patch is only available on PC for now. It'll be coming to consoles later in the week or also next week. We already know the deal by now when it comes to updates and patches for Dying Light 2. PC gets it first consoles get it at a later date. There is actually so much jam packed into these patch notes that you can actually go down below into the description and look at the timestamps to go and try to find some fixes that are related to you. And with all that said, there's a lot, so let's just jump right into it. Story progression fixes. All known cases with death loops have been eliminated. They also fix blocks in with multiple quests into the dark, assassination, Sophie in the raid quest, Herbert in the only way out, Veronica, Night Runners, The Lost Light, and Double Time. Additionally, they also solve problems with safe zones, such as the in-game clock stopping and not being able to sleep. They also made some massive fixes to co-op. Now it's unclear whether or not co-op is 100% reliable at this time. Do let me know down below in the comments once you do have this update. So starting out, they have stability issues fixed, so crashes or black screens in certain situations are now resolved. Numerous story progression blocks have been fixed, and they also fixed issues with accepting invitations. They also fixed the challenge issues, so no weapon when an inventory was full, difficulty balance improvements, and tools requirements properly handled now. They also fixed co-op parties spawning in distant places, and this one was kind of funny because, you know, you'd be going around doing a quest in one area and your friend will spawn a kilometer away from you. It's not exactly ideal, but it does make for some funny moments. They also improved and fixed the replication of city open world activities, windmill, hanging cages, loot chests, NPC rescue issues. Additionally, they also fixed enemies and players falling through the ground in certain situations. So that, that, that's gone now completely. And they also fixed several performance drops. And like I said, despite all these changes now being in the game with patch 1.2, there's no clear indication at this time whether or not co-op is working 100% as intended so it could be sticky so you could run into some issues we're just gonna have to wait and see moving on we have night runner tools so the paraglider and grappling hook upgrades can be applied correctly for players that obtain them during cooperative sessions that's a really good one because I know a lot of you were commenting down below I got the grappling hook and my friend upgraded it there went back to my world and now I can't do it and now I'm stuck that's a very common issue that tech one was very much aware about so it is good to see that it's finally being resolved the PK crossbow reward is correctly given to players in cooperative mode this fix will prevent new cases from appearing they also made improvements to the combat they also improved the biter behavior during the day so the enemy latches onto the players more frequently which diversifies enemy encounters performance of blunt weapons improved to reflect the sense of weight improved enemy reaction depending on the type of weapon to better reflect the weight of the weapon human opponents can now block players attacks during light hit reaction time and light hit reaction time for human enemies have been shortened so they overall made a lot of quality of life changes for the combat they're adding this whole sense of weight and in the next section they actually go into new ragdoll behaviors which is going to be an interesting one so let's get into that one opponents enter ragdolls more often and they work more naturally now ragdolls behave differently depending on the used weapon type appropriate forces are applied when falling from a height and when hitting different parts of the body while maintaining the force given from the direction of the blow when a ragdoll collides with its surroundings the appropriate sound and fx are played depending on the surface that the body is being followed on. Improved spike detections. The enemy is now always stamped on the spike after a hit. Additionally, spike's audio feedback is now improved and new FX were added, displayed based on the body's physical movements. It's funny, a lot of the changes that we're seeing here in these patch notes are actually some of the quality of life mods that people have been making over on nexusmods.com. So I wonder how much influence Techline is getting from those mods and whether or not they're implementing them directly into their game. It's very clear that they are taking feedback and listening to the community for this game, which is something that I'd love to see, especially in this next section, because my God, it says nighttime improvements and balance. This is, oh my God. And some of the changes here are insane. Howler senses range increased, increase the howler's resistance to ranged weapons the chase is triggered when a howler is hit by a ranged weapon and is still alive volatiles come out of hiding spots faster during the chase and the level four of the chase is now more difficult man there's so much packed into this patch we're only like halfway through so we still got a lot more to go so ui and ux improvements survivor sense now works correctly and can be triggered without any cooldowns after getting hit or performing specific parkour actions improvements to the options menu information architecture tab including a dedicated accessibility tab added feature to show hide or dynamically display 
player health bar, item selection, and time of day indicator. Techland coming in, adding the dynamic or no HUD options. You love to see it. They're listening to your boy here. The dynamic setting for player health bar is the new default and hides the bar when the player is at 100% health. That, that, that's insane. That's amazing right there. It goes so much in depth. Like the next one says, the dynamic setting for the item selector is the new default. The item selector becomes visible when in combat and when performing combat actions or using the D-pad. That, that is exactly what I said in my early access review that that the HUD should be dynamic they're actually listening to some of these suggestions that we have been making for the longest time and you'd love to see it the dynamic setting for the time of day indicator is the new default setting the time of day indicator becomes visible during day night transitional periods all of the widgets that are set to hidden or dynamic become visible in extended HUD visual improvements to player health bars and stamina bars these elements are lighter and their colors are more natural visual improvements to the enemy stance meter to more clearly indicate its connection to blunt weapons i i i'm i am overwhelmed and overjoyed with the amount of changes that this patch has it, it honestly this pop this patch is probably saving dying light 2 right now if, if i'm being quite honest with you we have five more sections here so improvements to the final boss fight fix an issue where the opponent does not react correctly to other players and does not change behavior that might lead to several glitches during co-op play they also added alternative opponent behaviors in phase two during co-op the opponent performs area attacks more frequently and they also shorten the narrative scenes between phases in boss fights which is an interesting one because they're going in and taking out some of the story i have to go back and replay that actually and the boss fight has pacing improvements which, which is interesting. It's an interesting change to go and see them start to directly interfere with the story and its length and how the game is being paced. I don't think I've ever seen that before in a AAA game. I could be very wrong, but if you guys have any examples of that, do let me know, especially in this next one, because this is outro improvements, the improvements of the game ending sequence, additional end of game scenes have been added to better align gameplay and outro scenes. So I'm wondering if they just completely got rid of that whole white text and maybe they added something more than that. Some of these changes, you're going to actually have to go back and replay a portion of the game to see if it's actually occurring. But three more sections, they have the balance tweaks. So higher ranked bows are now easily more accessible at merchants. Banshees and chargers are now more easily spawnable in the infected hordes during the night. My god, Techland is coming in with their cock swinging. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the issues that I had in my review are actually being addressed and fixed in this patch, which, which is giving me high hopes for this game, and I absolutely love this. If this update is any indication of what the future holds for Dying Light 2, I, I'm definitely going to be satisfied in the long run. Obviously, right now, I haven't played it, so I can't say for sure whether or not it is as drastic as it's making it out to be, but from what I'm reading, these changes seem amazing. Technical improvements introduced high High performance preset that optimizes the display graphics which allows you to play Dying Light 2 on older computers and laptops. PC DX12 cache related improvements, the game now runs smoother upon the first launch. AVX technology is no longer used in the game, improving issues related to the game crashing. They also made improvements to outdoor lighting, sun shadows, spotlight shadows, and motion blur. And guys, remember what we said fuck motion blur and last but not least the final section before this video does end the brutality pack so player hits with sharp weapons are now more precise and allow players to chop off body parts of opponents and cut them in half more easily both vertically and horizontally they reworked the audio for enemy hit response so different sounds are played depending on the strength of the hit and the damage that is indeed dealt blood splats now appear on the ground when a player hits an opponent if a player is close to an enemy during attacks the opponent's blood will splash on the screen <laughs> that was kind of gross they also improve blood effects on enemy bodies after hits, and a dead enemy is now interactable and reacts accordingly to blows and injuries. A new effect of bloodstains on the enemy's bodies after hit, and lastly, the final little patch note that we have, new blood FX's have been added. I am overjoyed. It may not sound like it right now because it's, it's very early in the morning. It's like 6 a.m. when I'm recording this. It sounds like a home run. This sounds like massive and major improvements to Dying Light 2 that this game desperately needed. I'm really hoping that all the cases of the death loop 
have been fixed. I'm also hoping that co-op has been resolved. These are some of the things that are going to be more noticeable the more the community plays. The fact that they went in and added a dynamic HUD, which is something that I've been wanting since I played this game in November, just makes me so excited for the future of this game. It was also an idea that not many people in the community were talking about, so I might be full of myself, but I think they're listening to me. But in short, that is the patch. This patch is now available on PC. Like I said, it will be coming to the consoles at a later date. And with everything that I've said to here, did any of these notes in here fix your issues? Are you excited for new things? Do let me know down below in the comments. I read every single one. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. This video was a long one, and I'll see you next time. So bye-bye. <laughs>